Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I am Tigris Osborne, the chair of the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance, and happy Fat Liberation Month to you. Welcome to NAFA's Fat Liberation Month kickoff party featuring Angry Fat People and DJ Bougie. We are so excited to have you with us this evening. Um, before we get started with the show, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about NAFA. And first of all, I want to thank our ASL interpreters from Pro Bono ASL. David and Lex are here with us tonight with backup from Ashley, and we are so excited to have them. Please check out Pro Bono asl.com for your interpreting needs. We also have captioning available through the Otter program. If you're with us live today, you should be able to click on the closed captioning button and get captioning started for you if that is something that you want or need. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. This is, as far as we know, the first ever Fat Liberation Month celebrated anywhere in the world in any time. And we are super excited to be able to offer so many special events to you this month that have been put together by NAFA's board and NAFA's Future of NAFA committee. You can find out all the details about, um, about Fat Liberation Month events, our presenters, and also a little bit of history from other folks who've done um, celebrations similar to this um, or uh, well, basically celebrations that lay the groundwork for us to be able to do this. You can see all of those things under the Fat Liberation Month tab on our website, naafa.org. And you can also see the other things that NAFA has going on. We offer education, support, and um, and advocacy for fat people to live our best lives in whatever ways we choose in the bodies that we have now. And we have been doing that since 1969. Um, and we are gonna keep doing it. And it is the support of folks like you all who allow us to do that and to bring you so many of these entertaining and educational events free of charge. Um, so if you'd like to support that, you can also do that under the contribute button at nafa.org. With no further ado, I'm really excited to introduce our very special guest this evening. Angry Fat People is a duo of performers, Matt and Tracy, formed in 2018 in New York City. Angry Fat People creates and produces web series episodes, songs, music videos, and live shows, all centered on the fat experience in, the performing, in performing arts and beyond. In this special kickoff performance commissioned by NAFA for Fat Liberation Month, Angry Fat People will introduce some of the tenets of fat liberation in the style of their lighthearted web series, which you should absolutely check out on YouTube, along with some special musical performances you won't want to miss. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And now I'm going to pass it on to Angry Fat People. We're angry fat people, we don't give a fuck If you discriminate, we'll run you over with the truck We're tired of you centering thin bodies So get ready for some rad fatties Angry fat people Hi, I'm Tracy And I'm Matt And we're, we're angry fat, fat people, people. <laughs> We are so happy to be here for the kickoff of NAFA's Fat Liberation Month. Matt and I are both opera singers who met while doing our first year long contract as professionals. Our friendship was formed because we were often the only fat people in the room dealing with all the baggage that comes with being a fat person in show business. Even at the opera in 2021, fat people are not always welcome on stage. I don't know what you're talking about. I have always been treated with respect. I've always been uplifted. I've always been comfortable in my body. I've never dealt with inappropriate or discriminatory comment on my work or at work. I've never been traumatized by the experience of fat and of being fat in a fat phobic world. I mean, when the director of our high school musical told me I was too well fed to be in the beggars chorus of Les Mis, that really had no effect on me at all. Well, you know more. I know that sometimes you want to put on a front, 
But remember, that's why we started Angry Fat People. When we started out in this business, we both really believed that we needed to change our bodies in order to be worthy of being seen and heard in the arts. And as we got older, speak for yourself. And as we both found our way to fat liberation, part of that evolution was realizing that fat people actually deserve to make art and music the same way people with normative bodies do, and that we should feel empowered to tell the stories of the human experience through our own lens. And actually, the discrimination we experienced in our field, as painful and inappropriate as it was, led us to more thoroughly understand the systemic oppression and discrimination that fat people endure across industries and socioeconomic classes, such as... The proven medical and psychological consequences to experiencing or even perceiving to experience weight stigma. Fat people are paid less and have unequal access to housing, employment, and health care, let alone the social impacts of living in a culture where everyone is afraid of fatness for all of the above reasons. No one wants to be treated that way, so we all try to escape the oppressive system however we know how, and then sometimes end up perpetuating it ourselves. This is why fat liberation is so important. None of us can be free of the body hierarchy until the entire thing is dismantled from top to bottom. Wow, that's amazing. You know, I've come a long way and honestly, I couldn't have done it without Tracy. She has helped me so much with my own fat liberation. And now she can help you too. What? Now for just $99.99 a month, you can buy the Fat Liberation Collection, the 10 levels on the bridge to fat liberation, 10 VHS tapes that get you to that liberated state of being. I'm so excited. Matt, that is not aligned with the values of fat liberation, which is a social movement that should be accessible to everyone. It shouldn't be something you have to buy into like diet culture, which offers solutions to problems they don't actually want to fix. Well, the wage disparity you were talking about, it's been affecting me like crazy. I'm just trying to get mine. Selling fake solutions to fake problems is what diet culture does, not fat liberation. Fine. I guess we can share our 10 levels on the bridge to fat liberation for free. Great. And we must also be crystal clear that this is an entrance point. These steps are about the individual journey into freedom and body justice, but fat liberation is about much more than the individual. It's about punishing, uh, dismantling punishing systems which value some bodies, smaller bodies, wider bodies, abled bodies over others. Here, here. Now let's walk up the bridge to liberation. <laughs> <laughs> 10 levels on the bridge to fat liberation. <laughs> Level one. Witnessing fat free people living their lives. I mean free people. I mean fat people at a pool party in bikinis. I mean a cool girl walking down the street looking cool and fat. So just the act of seeing fat freedom helps us be liberated? Right, exactly. Now, level two, up the bridge. Finding connection to your body, including healing from disordered eating. Of course, not all fat people have experienced EDs, but we live in a culture where both diets and doctors encourage fat people to have a dysfunctional relationship with food, to ignore our body's cues and control, restrict and punish them. A wonderful step of fat liberation is learning to listen to and trust your body. Level three, up the bridge you go. You're getting free, you're getting free. Level three, sitting with and acknowledging your own internalized fat phobia. Fat phobia works because we've all been taught to fear fatness. Identifying and unpacking the fat phobic beliefs that each of us still hold is essential to our collective survival. Spooky, level four, up the bridge you go. Where you stop, nobody knows. Level four, close. This is the fun one. Choosing an aesthetic presentation that makes you feel the most you. 
Wear your crop tops, wear your bikinis, flex your androgyny or your high femme drag. Show off your VBO. What does VBO stand for, Matt? Dunno! Matt, it's visible belly outline, bringing attention to your beautiful belly, dressing for yourself and your tastes rather than choosing the most flattering clothes, i.e. the clothes that make you look the smallest. Level five, still alive. Not using banal diet culture small talk as a coping mechanism in social settings. Oh my God, have you tried keto? It is amazing, it's honestly changed my life. Oh my God, I haven't eaten all day, I'm starving. I'll only get dessert if you help me eat it. I couldn't possibly eat it by myself. Oh my God, I had a huge burrito, I feel fat. Level six, one more step up the bridge. Taking up space. Take the space you need unapologetically in restaurants, on the subway, in an elevator. There's no shame in the space that your body takes up. What, no little jokes, Matt? None. I love taking up space. Number seven, almost to heaven. Talking to your friends about how their unconscious fat phobic habits negatively impact you. This can be as simple as I'm trying not to talk about diet culture stuff. Can we talk about something else? Or as deep as, hey, Jenna, stop sidekicking me and always centering your drama as a thin person. I find it's best to post a passive aggressive Instagram story. Always works for me. Level eight, still great. Raising your standards for romantic partners, knowing your value and voicing your needs from partners rather than accepting any and all. I wish I'd gotten to level eight before I met Jeff. Level nine, you're so close. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Level nine, forgive your mother. It sounds silly, but it can be healing to remember our mothers lived in the same fat phobic system that we do, but they were often equipped with different tools than we are. This one can be complicated and it's not even always possible. Still working on that one. Level 10, you've reached the apex of the bridge. Feel the liberation coursing through your veins. Choose visibility in all facets of your life and model liberation to others. Have you seen an episode of Angry Fat People streaming on Facebook and YouTube.com? Well, this next little morsel is a very special episode we wrote for our first live show in New York City in 2019. Hit it! Tracy. Hi. Tracy, what's wrong? Do you hate me? Matt has recently posted what is known as a before and after picture, showcasing his intentional weight loss. The caption reads, Hey guys, on the left you see a man who is unhappy with himself, who does not fit into his favorite kimono, who is sad and depressed and unloved. On the right you see a man who has more energy, who feels better, who sleeps better, who has the confidence to wear any kimono and ask out any man for a romantic romp. Thank you so much to the Water Chestnut Diet for giving me the freedom to find my true self five pounds lighter. My DMs are open if you want to learn more about my new lifestyle. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I just saw your most recent Instagram post. Oh, yeah. I'm doing the water chestnut diet, where you only eat water chestnuts. They're crunchy, refreshing, and have no nutritional value. And I'm already five pounds lighter, and I wanted to share my amazing progress. What's wrong with that? <sighs> Tracy 
he contemplates where to begin with this conversation. Although she wants Matt to understand he has body autonomy and therefore the right to do anything with his body that he deems correct, including eating only water chestnuts, she also wants to express the harm he's doing with the before and after picture. Look at this. I think you can really see my intentional weight loss in this photo. So Matt, I think it's really great that you are happy with your new lifestyle of only eating water chestnuts. Uh, it sounds like something that is super sustainable over a long time and it definitely won't cause your weight to yo-yo. But do you understand how offensive and harmful a before and after picture is? What do you mean? Aren't I allowed to be proud of my hard work and dedication? Aren't I allowed to celebrate my personal choices? Aren't I allowed to claim my rewards for only eating water chestnuts for the entire week? Sorry, I'm just so hungry. Okay, you do have the choice to attempt intentional weight loss. You then have the choice to talk about your attempt at intentional weight loss. When you make the choice to do those things, you are soliciting praise for losing weight, asking explicitly for validation from a culture that rewards losing weight, receiving that expected validation and praise and demonstrating to those watching what the social rewards are for pursuing intentional weight loss, implying that your new small body is better than your old bigger body, contributing to the unscientific but widespread belief that long-term weight loss is possible for the majority population. You could be triggering eating disorders and unhealthy obsessions and comparisons. You could tr trigger self harm and you could create a shame cycle for yourself if you regain the weight or are not able to maintain your new body or lifestyle. Do those seem like cool things to do? Well, you just said a lot of things and I'm just a vain gay guy looking for some external validation. Is that so wrong? No, but why not post a photo of just you looking happy. Why not just post the picture of you now? Why do you have to posit that one body is better than another? I'm just trying to get those likes. But I could get likes for my beauty alone without propping up the body hierarchy. Nailed it. Tracy, exhausted from the emotional labor she has once again been asked to do for free, takes the subway and drinks herself to sleep. Meanwhile, Matt hops into an Uber, posts a new selfie, which gets far less likes than the original fat phobic one. But Matt consoles himself by changing the bulbs in his ring light and posting Instagram stories about his cats. Angry fat people! Something that we come up against a lot as fat opera singers that a lot of people don't understand is that the opera as it is today is extremely fat phobic and fat performers are rarely considered for romantic leads, even if those are the roles that most suit their voice. And FYI, this goes against hundreds of years of tradition where the voice came first and served the music. If opera casting was like it is now in the 1950s and 60s, we would never have heard voices like Montserrat Caballé, Birgit Nielsen, Marilyn Horn, Pavarotti, and even Maria Callas. They might not even have been heard for auditions. Tonight, Tracy will be portraying Floria Tosca, who has two men interested in her, her boyfriend, Mario Cavaradossi, and Scarpia, who is a super creep that wants to sleep with her. At this point in the opera, Tosca has been given a choice. Sleep with Scarpia to save her boyfriend or watch him die. So Tracy's gonna sing and I'm gonna translate, but my Italian's a little rusty and I'll admit I'm not above bias. I'm not a robot. Perhaps my own personal experience might impact this particular translation. We'll see. I loved my art, 
I loved love, and I'm just a gorgeous fat babe who never did anything to anybody. And I did some singing too. to uplift my community despite being fat. go to church and I do pray for every fat phobic person I ever met. And I give the church flowers because I'm such a good person. I'm so pure and virginal because there are only two kinds of women in opera. The nuns and the whores. stuff I've been going through. Why have you forsaken me? in my power to try and make the world a better place. Wasn't my high note just fabulous? Isn't it so crazy that I can sing and act and be fat all at the same time? Who could believe it? <laughs> episode from the AFP vault. It's title, Fat in the Closet. We're angry fat people, we don't give a fuck. If you discriminate, we'll run you over with the truck. We're tired of you centering thin bodies, so get ready for some rad baddies. Angry fat people. Tracy. I'm back. I'm back. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm fat and beautiful. And how are you? Fat and stunningly beautiful. You seem like you're in a good mood. Well, yeah. I've been seeing this guy. Oh, do tell. He is just amazing. He's handsome and successful and smart and cultured. He gets all my references, even the really, really gay ones. He sounds like a catch. How did you meet? Uh, on Grinder, 
but it's turned into so much more than just a hookup. Oh, have you been on some dates? Well, not exactly. I, I mean, we hang out at his place, which is so nice, by the way. Well, is that considered a date? Of course it is. Yeah, I, normally I just go over there and we have a drink and talk and hook up, then talk and uh, then I leave. But would you have interest in going out for a dinner or something? Have you suggested that to him, like a museum or a movie or something? Yeah, but he always sort of shoots it down and says he'd rather stay at home. I see. Also, this one time he made me hide when a friend of his came over to pick something up. I mean, it wasn't for long, but it sure got cold on that fire escape. Wait. Is he doing that thing where he's ashamed to be seen with me so we just only ever do things in his apartment? I mean... Oh! <sighs> there, there. Let it out, Matt. Let it out. God damn it. I am so sick of this. Men are always, like, fetishizing my body and making it this forbidden thing they can only enjoy in secret. And what's so crazy is that so many people find fat people attractive, but because society tells them that fat is a moral failure, that they have to prove their own value with a high-value partner, or they have failed in some way, too, they either avoid fat people altogether, or they just fuck us and then hide us on the fire escape when the neighbor pops in. Totally. Toxic masculinity connects a man's understanding of his manliness to his ability to attract a partner who conforms to the ideal, right? So when your sense of your own identity is connected to how valuable on the hierarchy of a mate you can attract, it's, ho it's toxic because it makes you uh, your own self-worth dependent on external factors. And because unconsciously or not, it creates a value system for human beings and dramatically filters out who you would even consider as a romantic partner. Hmm, yes. And what's so crazy is that people are clearly attracted to fat people. If you go on porn sites like Xtube and Xvideo and you look at the top viewed videos, at least half of it, if not more, are fat people. Wow, you've really done your research. Thank you. <laughs> I think we should all revolt. How do we let these people know we won't just be their fat, sexy secrets forever, that we deserve respect and that we will no longer accept anything less than full humanity? What, do we flame them all? Do we write company-wide memos, rent a Skywriter, and blast them? But I don't want to stop boning them. If I burned every man in this city who had some internalized fat phobia or toxic masculinity issues yet undealt with, I would have approximately zero men left. <laughs> well, then what do we do? Can we keep our problematic fuck buddies and our self-respect? I've got an idea. It's this new crazy thing I just learned about. It's called boundaries. Oh, right, 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 right. Setting, setting boundaries that center your own needs and humanity, acknowledging your own self-worth and that you are worthy of love and intimacy from partners who know that they are lucky to date you. Because I'm worth it. Angry fat people! So I am here to tell you that Matt, Matthew Anchell, is one of those special artists who can sing literally anything you put in front of him. Um, he's the most special fat talent. Um, and more than anything, when we began Angry Fat People, uh, it was because we both felt distressed at the idea that a generation of fat talent would be lost because of bigotry in our industry and across the performing arts. Um, this is why I'm so excited to present to you tonight uh, the incredible voice of Matthew Anchell. He's an incredible voice teacher, writer, creator, and artist. I can't wait for you to hear him singing, I Am What I Am from La Cage au Fall. Special creature. 
creation. So come take a look. Give me the hook or the ovation. It's my world that I want to have a little pride in. My world and it's not a place I have to hide in. Life's not worth a damn Till you can say Hey world, I am what I am I am what I am I don't want praise I don't want pity I deal my own deck some think it's noise, I think it's pretty. And so what if I love each sparkle and each spangle? Why not try to see things from a different angle? Your life is a sham till you can shout out loud, I am what I am. I am what I am, and what I am needs no excuses. I deal my own deck, sometimes the ace, sometimes the deuces. There's one life, and there's no return and no deposit. One life, so it's time to open up your closet. Life's not worth a damn till you can say, Hey world, I am what I am. fat people performing their song, Fat Liberation. Angry fat people? What? Did you think we were done? So here's the problem with the diet culture bus. It says that there's something inherently wrong with us, telling you that your body's not right. Even moralizing health is not a clean fight. It's ableist boo, but you do you. I guess you run with a eugenics crew. Let's slim down our bodies for the nation state. The master race is only big on hate. The diet and weight loss industrial complex brings in 70 billion a year. And you better believe that fat liberation for once gives them something to fucking fear. Fat people do not owe you their health. We do not have equal access to wealth, employment, housing, health care provider. Let's burn down the system, sis, hand me that lighter. Your doctor tells you to lose weight for your health. You're entitled to ask about the efficacy of a diet. Hippocrates said, docs first do no harm, so no, we're not going to be fucking quiet. before and after body put your commitment to equality in the potty if you care more about the likes than the human toll yes you've lost the weight now you can lose the soul you're asking for validation for conforming you're seeking that celebration for performing subservience to patriarchy capitalist traps your white supremacy is chilling in your fucking lap F-A-T to the L-I-B. If my sister's in chains, then I cannot be free. The trauma is amplified for POC. Intersectional oppression live in 3D. We demand humanity, autonomy, respect. From the body hierarchy, we continue to defect. Their body, her body, your body, mine. This body, somebody's lucky to find. <laughs>
free bodies should not be radical. Diet culture, please take a sabbatical. We're on to you and your little tricks. We know when you're trying to sell a new fix. I feel like that Kermit gif when he Kermit's like ah, because that was so exciting. I hope it was just as exciting for all of you. We are so thankful to have angry fat people help us kick off Fat Liberation Month. Uh, before we bring them back to say goodnight and then hand things over to DJ Bougie, I just want to say once again that we are super grateful to have. Um, uh, David, Lex, and Ashley from Pro Bono ASL with us this evening. Pro Bono ASL is so dope, y'all. They support so many um, politicized organizations in helping create access, and it, they are um, predominantly um, predominantly POC organization and um, committed to providing interpreters who can um, understand the communities that they are working with when those communities represent different marginalized populations or have other kinds of special needs. And so they are just one of the most magical organizations on earth and you should support their work and, um, and, uh, and work with them when you can to make your uh, events more accessible as well. We are so thankful to have had them here this evening and they'll be supporting our events throughout Fat Liberation Month. Once again, to see the other events that are coming up on Fat Liberation Month throughout the month of May, we have numerous educational and entertaining events. And um, you can find those events at nafa.org, N-A-A-F-A.org, and just click the, click the Fat Liberation Month tab. To support NAFA, you can also click the Contribute button at the top of our webpage. Um, and if you'd like to tip Matt and Tracy tonight for the amazing work that they did, you can Venmo Matt. Matthew Wanchell, it's in the chat. If you're here with us live, it'll be in the captions if you're seeing this later on YouTube. Um, Matt and Tracy, can we bring you back on so we can show you some love? Thank you so much for having us, Tigress and Nafa. Like what an honor. Uh, the lineup for this month is absolutely incredible and we're honored to be a part of it um, and to be performing because it's been a tough year for, for performing artists. Um, so we appreciate you so, so, so much. Thank you guys. And thank you to the amazing interpreters. You guys are unbelievable. <laughs> amazing. And we'll hang out in the chat for the after party. So we'll, we'll see you there. Yay. So um, it looks like DJ Bougie was scheduled to join us live to say hello to everybody before we uh, turn on the incredible custom video that he made for us. But he has been, it looks like held up. At, he had a really exciting audition today and it looks like he's maybe been held up there. So um, we'll pop back on the screen with DJ Bougie if he gets here. But what we're going to do next is just go to um, the, the amazing video that he provided us, our Interpreters are going to stay with us for the beginning of the party to to do um, the lyrics for some of that music, and um, we'll hang out in the chat. You, um, we will still be recording for the first thirty minutes or so. Um, so you, no, I take that back. We'll be recording for just a few minutes, and then you can turn your cameras on. So as soon as you see it say stop recording, you can turn your cameras on so that you can see each other. Thank you so much for being with us on behalf of the board of director of NAFA uh, um, and the future of NAFA committee. Thank you, angry fat people. And thanks all of you. Happy Fat Liberation Month. Just give me one second. I'm going to cue up the music. Without any assistance or guidance from you, I have loved you assiduously for eight months, two weeks, and a day. I've been stood up four times. I've left.